Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I don't know where everybody is in the world right now. Uh, it is 11.48 a.m. by me. Hello, hello. Uh, I did not schedule this live stream or, uh, you know, put it for the future or anything like that. This was just a random one that I decided to do this morning. Uh, I heard about a tool called Mash Driver. And I'm just going to share my screen here really quick. So I was on the CNCF Slack channel today and I was looking in the platform engineering working group and I saw somebody mention this tool. Uh, I started digging into it a little bit. Um, looks like it looks relatively new. I think it was founded in 2021, if I'm not mistaken. In terms of the pricing, there is like a free version. Uh, so that's obviously what I'll be using. And then, you know, startup growth enterprise. Uh, I do like the pricing transparency, obviously, that always makes our decisions much easier. But if you just want to play around with this as I'm going through it, it seems like preview environments, secrets management, private bundles, automated monitoring, uh, supported IEC tools. Okay, so in terms of functionality, there's nothing that the free version gives you, uh, or I'm sorry, there's nothing that the paid versions give you that the free version doesn't other than this supported IAC tools thing here. Uh, and then like some like metrics retention, audit retention, that obviously makes sense. Um, the support is what you're paying for as well. Okay, cool. So let's give this a shot. And what is it essentially saying that it is uh, enable developer self-service without the chaos? So let's see if that's true or not. I'm going to click the get started button. I've literally never touched this, by the way. Uh, this is the, I literally just heard about this an hour ago and I was like, oh, it might be cool to live stream this. So let's go ahead and do a sign up. Um, use my a software 417 account, which is email that I use for uh, all of my trial stuff and submit. Oh, <laughs> tried to put in a weak password. It didn't like that. Uh, let, me, let me do this. I'm going to actually just do a uh, I'm gonna generate a password on my end here. One sec. Um, match driver. Let me generate this password. Save, copy. All right. There we go. All right. So I'm going to get an email. Uh, I'm just going to open it up in another browser here, uh, which I'm not going to share. All right. I'm going to verify the email. Okay, so now let me share this browser. Uh, actually, let me see if I could just kind of just pop it in here. Oh, yeah, I can. Okay, cool. Make sure that it's still sharing the same thing. Yep. All right, perfect. So, create an organization. So, <coughs> excuse me, I still have a little bit of a cough from yesterday. So, it's going to call it PE testing. PE test. Uh oh, bear with me one second. I figured this may happen. Hold on one sec. Sorry about that. I was afraid that was going to happen. I have my plumber coming this morning and they told me uh, in the afternoon, I said, okay, let me try to get this. Uh, let me try to get this live stream first. And then of course they just called me, but they're, they're 45 minutes away. So we got time together. All right. So I'm going to click on create organization. All right. Your mass driver free plan starts now to get started, set up your cloud credentials and manage up to 500 of your cloud resources per month. Okay. So 
right off the bat, we obviously have to uh, authenticate to our cloud provider. Supports the big three, makes sense. But what I'm curious about is, let, let's click, click around a little bit before we deploy anything. But what I wanna see is, uh, can you just authenticate and do stuff and things with Kubernetes in the cloud? Or can I just somehow connect a, a Kubernetes cluster here, uh, regardless of if it's running in the cloud or not? That, that shouldn't matter really, but. All right, so projects, you can create a new project. Uh, project is a boundary around infrastructure environment. Okay, that makes sense. So, you know, dev staging prod or, you know, various teams, whatever. Artifacts, that could be anything, any type of binary. DNS zones, interesting. Select the cloud type that uses your DNS zones. Okay, that's cool. I'm curious if actually, wanna match driver. <coughs> So, uh, community docs, that's what I was looking for. So getting started, concepts, okay, artifacts. Artifacts are resource created by deployment that adhere to a specific type, makes sense. Connections, we know. I'm curious what uh, the DNS thing does. Uh, I don't think that's what I meant. I mean, obviously DNS is DNS, but I'm just curious what, like, I'm wondering if this DNS thing, is this like a, uh, like a boundary between like, uh, what networks can hit your environment or vice versa? Um, that's okay. I guess we'll come back to that. All right. I'm going to hit this gear button. Credentials, we just saw service accounts. Yep, okay. That's just for authentication purposes via the API. <clears throat> users, if you want to add new users. Audit logs, need necessary. Subscription plan, and then we also have, uh, oh, this is cool. All right, so there's, there's almost like an academy here, uh, which is interesting. We have some, you have, can see some webinars as well. So some docs and all that good stuff, which is awesome. Okay, so that's a quick walkthrough there. Uh, what I wanna check though, two things that are very important to me with a self-service tool. Number one, do I have to use the cloud, right? Um, because like, for example, like let's say I have a Kubernetes, let, let's say there's a self-service portal and I'm using self-service from a platform engineering perspective for the interface or the interaction to interact with whatever capabilities, right? Those capabilities are any tools, right? Uh, Argo CD or, or Stormforge or any, any type of tool, right? That I need in my environment for my developers and my engineers to use. Because like I, th there's, there's this three piece that I said that I talk about a fair amount. You have your underlying platform, which could be, you know, Kubernetes or it could be uh, VMs or it could be bare metal or it could be AWS ECS. Like it doesn't matter. Right. Then you have your platform capabilities and your platform capabilities are what you need that platform to do. So if I come to you as a developer and engineer and I say, hey, I need a platform that allows me to deploy uh, uh, containerized applications utilizing a GitOps controller could be Argo, could be something else, or maybe you want to be specific, right? So those are the capabilities. And then your interface or interaction is what you give the developers and the engineers to interact with that platform. Is it a CLI? Is it just an API? Is it a GUI, right? A, a, a GUI-based UI like we're seeing with Mass Driver, right? Like what's that interaction? So when I see self-service, I want the ability to interact with any environment if possible. Now, from what I can see, <clears throat> excuse me, I can really keep coughing. What I can see is, I could be wrong here, but this is more of a cloud-based self-service tool versus a standard self-service or a Kubernetes self-service tool. Because from what I'm seeing, I can't just like connect a Kubernetes cluster. Like I have to go through the cloud. 
but I could be wrong because I've been looking at this for five seconds. So let me just see if there's like anything. <clears throat> okay, I see. So it comes up. Uh, add DNS to your Kubernetes deployment. That's all right. Let me open up that. This actually sounds kind of fun. I wonder if that has something to do with removing core DNS connections. All right. So there is a CLI, which is good. Okay, so create. Before getting started, you'll need the CLI. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, in this guide, we'll generate an application bum, uh, bundle and publish it to Mass Driver. The application bundle will be all of the configuration of your application needs to connect time, uh, to runtimes, serverless containers, et cetera, with uh, cloud resources, queues, database, et cetera. So this is interesting. Uh, right off the bat, what we can see here, which is actually really, really good, this isn't just a self-service portal for Kubernetes. This is a self-service portal for various cloud resources. This is a self-service portal for serverless, for containers running in their pods, whatever, running in Kubernetes. So that's really great. I, like we can see that off the bat. So if we scroll down, I'm, I don't want to go through this like line by line here. I just kind of want to see. I'm just scrolling because I'm kind of looking to see. Okay, so this is almost like a, well, yeah, I mean, this, not almost, this is a YAML based deployment for your application. So very similar to like what you'd see in a Kubernetes cluster, for example. Um, deploy. Okay, yeah. So, so good news is you can deploy via the GUI or uh, via the CLI. So you have a couple of different UI based options, which is great. Oh, here we go. And I was wrong. And I'm very happy that I was wrong. Uh, just looking at these screenshots here, it looks like I can connect directly to a cube config, which means I may still need to connect to a particular cloud, but at least I can go directly to a Kubernetes configuration, which if you're not familiar with the cube config, it's where uh, all of your authentication authorization is. So like what you can do in the particular cluster that you're connected to uh, is, you know, all those credentials are in your cube config. But I'm just looking to see. Okay, let me go back to that. Um, add DNS to your Kubernetes deployment, DNS host name, deploy. That's interesting. So I could be wrong here, but This almost looks like my deploy DNS as well as your cluster using cert manager. Simplifies the process of obtaining, renewing in the external DNS, allows you to control DNS records dynamically via Kubernetes. Uh, and okay, interesting. That's cool. Enable ingress controller. That's what I was wondering if it was gonna do. So it, it it, it allows you to create those DNS records, uh, but it also it gives you the ability to use an ingress controller. So if you don't want to, essentially, if you don't want to set up DNS manually for your services that are maybe front-end based services running in Kubernetes, um, you could do something like this. Interesting. That's actually really cool. I, I, don't, I don't think I know of any other tools that, that do that specifically like that. Uh, connections. This is something else that I was looking at. So as you're creating your application deployment, you can specify your connections. <clears throat> so in this case, for example, your generated connections should resemble those below. Uh, in this example, you have two required connections, Kubernetes cluster, the cluster of the app will be deployed to in Postgres. Interesting. So this actually allows you to create this YAML configuration and then specify within that YAML configuration what you want to deploy, but also what you need. So your Kubernetes cluster, you may have stateful workloads that need a database. And in that case, you can specify your database within your application configuration. So that's actually really cool. And then you get this GUI based implementation here and the Kubernetes, we kind of just saw that as well. Okay. So let, I just want to check to see if there are any comments here. All right. Uh, Nothing in particular. Okay, cool. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna maybe connect to Azure. 
All right, and it just needs, okay. Owner. Okay, all right, it just needs an app registration. Okay, fair. I'm going to open up another browser here just to uh, just to see if I can use one that's already existing. I mean, I could. Uh, I mean, I could also just do it here because you're gonna you're gonna see the credentials anyways. Uh, ba -ba -ba. App registrations. I have so many that already exist, so I'm just gonna see if like I can use one that already exists. Uh, and if not, it's fine. I'll just create it. Uh, tenant ID. I'm gonna create a secret. I think that is that the one I just created. Yeah. And then subscription ID. Boop, boop, boop. All right, and create, oh, um, test, Azure. I don't know if that means I'm good or not. I'm just trying to see if, uh, if it's actually connected, but let's see how we can test that. Create a project, Azure test. Submit. Environments, add environments. I guess I'm just kind of trying to test to see if uh, I actually connected properly or not. Looks like I did. Uh, okay, getting started. Mass driver supports dynamic, um, dynamic deploying applications as well as managing cloud infrastructure. The easiest way to start your application in Mass Driver is using the generator below um, or with the CLI. Uh, Just looking to see if uh, oh, cool. All right, it's going to open up VS Code here on my end. I can't share two screens at once, uh, or two windows rather. I'm just installing that uh, via the CLI here really quick. Oh, nice. That's cool. So to my point earlier, um, cause again, before I hopped on the live stream, uh, I did very minimal, like I did literally just opened up the, the web page of mass driver and the point of me doing that and not coming with a, a pile of information is because as you're going through this process, uh, it's going to be the same thing, right? What are you going to do? You're going to look at a tool. You're going to say, that looks neat. Let me go play around and test it. Uh, you're not going to do two weeks of thorough investigation, right? You're going to jump in and you're going to start to play around with some stuff. And that's what we're doing. So I like, uh, and what I was saying before, you know, to, to my point earlier, this isn't just Kubernetes based. So this is a full self-service portal for various services. Now, of course, self-service portals like this do exist. It's just a matter of uh, which one is more efficient, right? Because there are self-service portals like this that exist. Uh, this isn't the only. So if I scroll down here, we can see 
there are a couple of different methods that we can use Kubernetes jobs, Kubernetes deployments, Terraform modules, et cetera. I do not have a Kubernetes cluster running in Azure, but I'm just going to click the Kubernetes deployment here. And I'm just going to call it Nginx. I can't, obviously can't deploy it, but what's the dependencies you plan on connecting? Okay, now, I think this is where there's some differentiation. There are plenty of tools out there that give you a GUI or a CLI to make deploying things easier, right? Um, which is great. Like, we obviously need those things. And there's nothing wrong with having multiple tools in the same category. Uh, I tell all of my clients all the time and all my customers all the time, like various vendors that I work with, don't worry about, like, there being other competition. Like, in this space that we're in, uh, there's the pie is large enough and there's a piece for everybody, right? So, you know, as a, as a vendor, you know, you, there, it's fine to have multiple self-service tools and multiple self-service capabilities. Uh, how, many, how many public clouds do we have, right? Like, it's totally okay. But <clears throat> we also want to specify where uh, the differentiations are. So this differentiation, for example, let's say... I have an Nginx, or I have a Kubernetes, you know, stateful app, and I say DB for database, right? And essentially, what I'm saying here is, if I, if my assumption is correct, right? So, like, the, like, and this is just a pseudo example, but my application may have a dependency on Cosmo DB. So I'm able to set up my dependency right from the self-service portal. Versus, you know, either number one, deploying without the self-service, uh, I'm sorry, without the dependency, and number two, having to worry about it later. I'm just looking at my phone really quick because I just want to, okay, no. I just want to make sure the plumber didn't call. Uh, okay, so create, uh, the dependency name is only two characters. Uh, use lowercase, all right. Create app. Your app is ready to use in the mass driver platform, but you must take these steps to start deploying your code to the application. We'll add your new app bundle to the canvas, but more steps are needed. Okay. The downloaded zip file contains the source code for your application. Okay. So you have to use the CLI, which is good. Uh, set up for publishing. You can publish changes to your blah, 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 and your deployments. Okay. Cool. Uh, Add my app bundle. See if there are any comments that came in. Nope, all right, we're good. Okay, cool. Interesting. So, did it download the... Uh, Hmm. create new environment in this project. Nope. So this is interesting. Now this gives us like a, okay, that is cool. Uh, I'm trying to think of what this, what this map reminds me of. Um, <coughs> oh, this reminds me of pager duty run deck. Uh, two totally separate tools R run deck is for uh um like automated playbooks right like that's not what the i mean it could be but two totally different products and two totally different spaces but the way that it's set up and configured reminds me of that um yeah it's actually really cool so like you specify the architecture of what you want your application to look like and then it gives you like the default of what it should look like, right? Like Azure Virtual Network, it's going to go into the AKS cluster. You also need Cosmos. And then you have the uh, Nginx deployment here. And so you can actually specify, like you don't have to, like you don't have to write any YAML here. Like I can just specify, right? Nginx latest, like for my container image, right? Uh, and then specify horizontal pod auto scaling, number of replicas, ports, Uh, just throwing random numbers in here. Details. 
Oh, it actually even uh, cost available soon. It'll give you some cost stuff, which is cool. Interesting. Save. Oh, because oh. I didn't. Uh, I didn't save the. Cool. And then in the cluster, same thing. So, okay. So the, this, this kind of uh, shows my point of what I was saying before though. You have to connect. Oh no, wait. Yeah. Okay. So could be wrong here. I don't think so. Yeah, so like, you know, like, see, like when I click on the Kubernetes piece to fall cloud credentials. So what this is saying is I can't just take my Kubernetes cluster that's, you know, running on my Intel Nook Extreme over there and import it here. I have to import a cluster running in AWS, Azure, or GCP, which is fine for most cases, but it it would would have been nice if, if uh, the capability of just importing any Kubernetes cluster via kube config was there. Um, but anywho, so I can go to the config and, oh, that's cool. Configuration presets development. Oh, nice. Check that out. So general purpose D2S, right? And then if I do production, see how that changes. So it's almost like uh pre-built templates in a sense, which in a sense, which is cool. Now. Yeah, see, interesting because like you don't need a Kubernetes cluster. I can just deploy one from here. This is actually going to deploy a Kubernetes cluster. Now, as we can see here on the left with the bundles, there are also a lot of other things we can do here. See how that like, oh, generating infrastructure. Hold on, give it a second. See how that like auto generates. And then I don't think we can, uh, let's say, I don't know. Uh, disconnect existing links to create it. Okay. Now I just want to, um, nope. Nope, okay. Point being is that you can add new blocks, which are like the various services, right? And then you can configure those services <coughs> all from here. So I have like, I'm, I'm, I have Azure, like this Azure configuration, but I also have this ECS configuration here, which means your, your configuration can be multi-cloud, right? That's really cool. So there's two parts of this. Uh, there is of course the, GUI based piece, and then there's also the CLI based piece. Let me see. Let me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch to the CLI here really quick. Uh, let me go back, present, share screen, Visual Studio Code, I think. Yeah. All right, cool. So oh, what happened? Yes. Yeah. I'm assuming I have to authenticate via the CLI to my environment. Hmm. Right. Crane deploy preview environments. 
Pass preview. Construction application is a cohesive unit. Pass preview. Deploy. Or init. Test. Required environment variable not set. Uh, missing. Okay, there it is. So that's what I was hoping some, it would come up at some point. Um, you have to set some environment variables for the authentication to your environment. Okay, cool. But point being, there is a cli based configuration here that you can utilize to essentially do the same thing that I was just doing in the GUI, uh, which is good for self-service because there, there will there will be engineers that want to use the GUI based thing that I just showed, and then there will be engineers that want to use the CLI based piece, uh, or a little bit of both, depending on what you're doing, right? Like that they, that graph, obviously, that we see is pretty nice. Um, it's in, it's interesting. I like again, like it reminds me very much like Rundeck, uh, and I haven't used Rundeck for such a long time. Uh, it's been years, but like. Run deck used uh, maybe it still does, but it used to have that like that that GUI pointers and you know click on the service and configure the service there and it's neat. I, I think a couple of other tools do that as well, but it, it reminded me of Run deck. Um, but it, very interesting, very very cool stuff. Uh, so yeah, I mean there there's a lot of configurations that you can utilize in the GUI. There are a lot of configurations that you can utilize in the CLI. Uh, and again, the 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 whole idea around MASH driver is not just for Kubernetes, right? It's this platform enter, engineering interaction or interface capability that uh, is for everything and anything. And for everything and anything, I mean Azure, AWS, and GCP. Um, yeah. So I'm looking here. I don't see any questions around MASH driver specifically. Uh, I see a lot of comments, so that a lot of people joined. Thank you so much for joining. Appreciate it. Cool. All right. So I don't see any questions specifically coming in, but of course you can leave comments and stuff like that uh, on LinkedIn, on YouTube, et cetera. Uh, it'll be uploaded to all those places and on X as well. Uh, I'm going to jet because my plumber should be here relatively soon. Uh, I just got the text. Thanks so much all for joining. Appreciate it. And I will see you next time. Actually tomorrow, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, I am doing a live stream tomorrow with Robin. Uh, he's a lead cloud architect. And we're going to be talking about all things platform engineering. It's going to be at 9 a.m. U.S. Eastern. Feel free to jump on in, ask us any questions, and I'll see everybody tomorrow. Thanks.